Hi, I'm Simo Roche. This week, Northern Powerman received some devastating news. Professor Jane Turner, OBE, business leader, pioneer, friend and pro-vice-chancellor of Teesside University, sadly passed away after living for many years with ovarian cancer. We send all of our love and support to her family. Anyone who's ever listened to this podcast or had any interaction with Jane will know that she was a true Northern Power woman. Jane was fully committed to deeds, not words, and was massively passionate about making change and taking her responsibility as a disruptor seriously. She loved her community, her students, and the North had no boundaries. Despite being poorly for so many years and facing so many challenges around her health, Jane never stalled in her drive for change and supporting young women from across all of the North, but especially her beloved Tees Valley in the North East. She was latterly passionate about the Power of Women campaign, the idea of which sparked from a Power Circle dinner discussion three years ago. Based on Jane's true belief that growing up in a less advantaged area doesn't mean you can't achieve your goals. The Power of Women campaign will certainly stand as just one of the incredible legacies left by this fearless, tireless woman. And I urge you all to support. In August 2018, Jane was interviewed for this podcast when Sam Walker and I were over at Teesside University recording a podcast. As a tribute to a woman who lived life to the full, we wanted to give you another chance to hear the conversation as Jane talks about her life, her passions and her challenges. At the time, Jane worked also as gender champion for Teesside University and started by explaining what that entailed. The gender champion role is basically to drive gender equality across the university in terms of our staff, but also our student population as well. So it's about 16,000 people in total that, that I'm responsible for. And certainly for the student population, it's about driving um, aspiration and ambition in our young female students, but also making sure that there is a quality of opportunity across the university as well. In real terms, on a sort of day-to-day basis, what little things do you do to make that happen? I haven't established myself as this formally, but I guess I'm a mentor. I'm a sounding board, certainly for uh, female colleagues in the university, but also reaching out to the student population as well, primarily through the students' union, and just giving um, people support and advice and guidance and encouraging them to be the best that they can be. And if there are things that are not going well or positively for them, it's about giving them the courage to go and change that and disrupt that and actually accept and hold the mirror up. That actually is not acceptable. And there's something you can do about that. So empowering women to go and make a difference and to not accept. And quite often we get stuck in routines. um, And also there's a strong narrative in the Tees Valley that is quite male dominated and for women and young women studying here they are immersed in that and so I quite often disrupt that narrative because I think that's my job as gender champion and through that disruption change views and perceptions and trajectories. So tell me about you how did you Jane born and bred in this neck of the woods went away for a bit came back tell me about your journey of how you started off on here because you you worked in your parents business didn't you when you were a teenager I did so I was born in Hexham in Northumberland and moved to Gisborough when I was three years old Uh, and my father worked in Middlesbrough he then set up his own business when I was about eight years old um, a manufacturing company so in holidays and at weekends I would work with my dad and as an entrepreneur you work tend to work seven days a week 16 hour days um, so I didn't see much of him so I saw him by being in the business as well um, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I left school um, uh, or indeed college no idea my brother had a very clear pra- career pathway knew what he wanted to do and that worried me as a young teenage, teenager. And the career advice I, that I recall was basically I sat in a room, was given a big index, a big book with categories of jobs and was encouraged to look at the secretarial section. Um, and, you know, I achieved, I got my O levels. I was in a, the top sets at school, so I wasn't an underperformer. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And at the age of 19, I became a single mum. Um, which was, and I was judged pretty negatively by people at that time around that, therefore how my life would turn out um, as a single mum. And I think I just developed this burning 
inside that actually I will prove them wrong. I don't know who the them were, but people had views about how my life would turn out and I will go on and I will achieve things. I've no idea what that will look like, but I will never be in a position where you have the right to negatively judge me. So having that burning desire and that drive to prove them wrong, but not knowing how you were going to do that and being a mother, that's pretty tough circumstance to find yourself in. What did you do? It is tough, but I was... uh, but I wanted to be a positive role model for my son. So that was the main driver. And then I guess I reflected back to the times when I felt most happiest outside of school, which was when I was working with my dad. And when they, when I was 16, they went on holiday, my parents overseas, and they left me in charge of the business for two weeks. Wow. So I was managing all of these uh, hairy arsed, you know, guys uh, with attitude and the bank. Um, and I loved it. And I just reflected back to that time and thought, actually, I really came alive when I was in that business environment. And leadership really caught my eye as well, because my dad had left school at 15, no qualifications, but he was an awesome leader. And it wasn't about ego. It wasn't about the trappings of wealth. He just genuinely wanted to do a a good job, deliver great service and great product and build a loyal team. And he did that. And so I was very struck by seeing my father as my father, but my father is a leader of a business. And I just wanted to go out and be a good leader. Um, and yes, and this burning ambition to be a positive role model for my son. I have lost count of the number of completely awesome women I have interviewed on this podcast who cite their father as one of their major, if not the most major influence in their career. We need to have more conversations about that because a lot of the time we talk about female role models. And I wonder if you had any of those as well, if you had any women that you could look around going, well, she is doing what I want to do. Well, she is where I want to be. Was was that woman there for you? No, uh, it wasn't. I, but I was so internally driven and motivated. I don't think I was particularly looking externally either. I just knew that I needed to, to sort my life out and I didn't want to become because of the judgments around what had happened to me, I didn't want to expose any vulnerabilities to anybody else. So I just became very internally focused. But the backdrop being my dad was a great guy and a great leader. So if there's a role model in the background, it was it was him. And then and therefore I knew that I came from good DNA. My mum too is part of this, but particularly because I saw my dad in that little, that leader role. So no, there is not. And I've been asked that question many times. There is not a female role model that jumps out other than my grandmother was a school teacher. And when she got married in those days, she had to give up teaching. My grandfather, whom I never met, uh, died when she was in her early 50s. And she retrained and went back into teaching in as a 53-year-old woman. And I thought that was pretty impressive. Uh, so yeah, in the background, a role model there, perhaps. So as a young woman who had this this drive and this ambition and this great role model in her dad and that person who she could endeavour to be like, were you accepted in that world of the cut and thrust of the business world? Or as a woman, did people not take you seriously? Well, what I did was I thought, I'm going to have to get some qualifications here and I want some gravitas and some uh, substance to what I want to do. So um I moved to London and I got married and then I had my daughter Harriet um, three years later and then we moved back to the North East. So when Harriet was two, I enrolled on an HNC in business and finance. Huge trepidation thinking I'll never be able to do this, I'll fail, I'll not be good enough, all of those things and elements. Standard. Yeah. <laughs> and I had two years doing a, a part-time programme, studying in the evenings and at weekends and I absolutely came to life. Um, I loved it. I thrived on it. I then went to do a degree part-time. I then went to do a master's part-time. And the lecturers that I came into contact with during that time, I I remember thinking, there's no relevance here. They're they're not practitioners. They haven't been there and done this stuff. And I've got some experience, I guess, of working in my father's business. I think I could be a lecturer and I think I could bring this material to life. So I got a part-time lecturing role. Um, and the confidence just grew uh, over time. And then partway through that, I then thought, actually, to be taken seriously, I need to work for a blue chip. And a job came up at Orange Telecom, which I applied for and was successful. So I went to work for Orange and ended up as their leadership specialist at, at Orange. And from there, my career just took off big time. Um, so I don't take any nonsense. So um <laughs> I needed to take myself seriously first, which I took the time to do and have the the foundations and the credibility for me that I then felt confident to go out on a, on a business stage and hold my own, basically. Anecdotally, women aren't as entrepreneurial as men is a phrase I hear. That they're, they're not as willing to take risks as men are. They're not as willing to put themselves out there or take no nonsense as men are. 
Has that ever been a fair thing to say? I think it's a fair thing to say. Again, I go back to careers advice and guidance and to what extent are young women and young girls encouraged to be risk takers. And I think they're quite male. The behaviours that are associated with that, I think, are quite male. You would associate as male traits, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and, and maybe for some women at the background, there's the, well, I, at some point I may want to have a family and therefore where does this, all of this risk taking take me when I need to get serious and be responsible for a family as well? Um, but again, it's just about encouraging people to be the best that they can be and providing opportunities. And there is no reason why there should be a gender split as to those who are more entrepreneurial um, or not. If we look at emotional intelligence, research shows that women are more emotionally intelligent. Arguably, to me, if you are an entrepreneur and you want to run your own business, emotional intelligence is going to get you a long way in that regard. Mm -hmm. So I think it's how we position and phrase what we mean by an entrepreneur um, to, to change again, disrupt that narrative. When I think about my education, I'm lucky enough to have received a really great education. You know, I went all the way through school. I went to uni. I don't remember a single lesson during that time in which business was ever even mentioned or the notion of ever being an entrepreneur was ever mentioned. Does this need to become, do you think, more ingrained in our curriculum from, from day dot? Absolutely. And and I think in our, the way that we are structured in terms of our curriculum in primary schools, in terms of the national curriculum, I think quite often we squeeze the creativity out of our young children uh, and, and arguably how do you get that back? So I think it's an, it, it is absolutely essential that we um, nurture that and value that as a, straight, a trait with it, within young people as well. But at Teesside University, what we've, we've made very clear is setting up and running your own business is a legitimate career pathway, regardless of your gender. And we will create the ecosystem and you'll be, have the opportunity to experiment whilst you're here to find out if that is a route that you want to go down at this age. And if not, you can park it and you may want to pick it up later mm -hmm. in life but opportunity for all and let's stop squeezing out the creativity of our very young people. You, you mentioned, Joan, about not having a female role model in, the, in a business sense when you were growing up. You know, you now are the only female pro vice chancellor here at Teesside University. You are seen as a role model now. Is, is, is that, is there a pressure that comes with that? I don't put myself on a pedestal. I don't see it as a pressure. I'm just passionate, authentically passionate about this space because I've lived it. And when people negatively judge you, that switches something on inside and it's never switched off. So it's a legitimate and it's just um, an unconscious behavior now that actually I've got a job to do and I need to drive change for the next generation. And I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer last September complete shock out of the blue um and ovarian cancer is obviously a very female um illness to have and whilst I was recovering after the surgery which was pretty extensive and I was still in hospital my daughter brought me a book in which just had on the front your thoughts and I was just jotting stuff down and thinking actually something very personal has happened to me as a woman that wouldn't happen to a man there's, my surgeon had said to me there's something about the resilience of women in the northeast which I know because I've lived, I've lived and grown up here. And that even, I don't know how long I've got, but it just gave me more fuel to the fire here that actually enough is enough. It's time for change. And I want to find like-minded people to work with me. So I'm not on a pedestal. I'm not any different to anybody else, but I just think I'm in more of a hurry now than I, than I ever was. And for people who say, we've made it. More girls are going to university than boys in some areas of the world. You look at, you know, there are more female lawyers joining than male lawyers in certain areas of the country at the moment. The, the fight's over. We don't need to keep fighting. What do you say to that? It's not over. We haven't even started. I mean, yet more women go to university. Academically, they are more successful than their male counterparts. Yes, more women might be going into the legal profession, but how many of them are at managing partner status? How flexible? How are they supported? And I appreciate we're, we're pushing through generational, a generational backstop, but hence the hurry, because we need momentum behind this and change. And with the right people and men need to be part of this. I'm not, I don't hate men. This has to be a joined up campaign. They have to be part of this. And those who get it and are the early adopters, they're the people I want to work alongside with because they will help push through. And it's all about disrupting the status quo and actually standing up and saying, that is not acceptable anymore and that is not good enough. And I will talk, if you don't want to work with me on this, then I'll go and find people who do. But we are, I will not be blown off course. And someone who does support you, Jane, was uh, a woman you met 
at a palace in London this year. Congratulations on your OBE. You were due to go earlier in the year, but you weren't very well, as you said. So you had to put it off for a bit. But hey, you got to receive it from the Queen. I did. And throughout my uh, surgery and my chemo, I, it was a light, a very dark tunnel. And the number of times I've said to my husband, I won't make it to the palace. And the number of times he said, yes, you will. So yes, I met the Queen, um, an awesome woman, I always held her in the highest regard as a role model. There's a role model. Um, and she asked me which university I worked at, what I did. And I told her that I was part of a group of awesome people driving a campaign for social change around women equality in the region, in the north. And she said, quote, unquote, and we need that, don't we? And I said, yes, your majesty, we absolutely do. So I am now being very open, saying the queen has said we need this. Um, So, yeah, an, an amazing experience. The phenomenal Professor Jane Turner who died this week. Jane, you'll be so missed, but your legacy will continue to shine bright. Thank you for listening. 